all right you guys want to get to this part right here and how to take this stuff out well if your engine is all wet like this one things will come off quite easy you're trying to get to this part so let me show you how to get to there using a few different tools first you're going to be needing a 13 you're going to need a 10 you need a 16 and what else one and a 3 8 and a 5 8 5 8 is basically a um 16 so you need those things and now let's get to it first thing you do is you take off these bolts here off of this fan shroud right here all you need is the top once you take that off put that away over there then you take the bolts off the fan right there you have a pulley and a belt that goes around here so you have to uh definitely move that adjust that little tensioner take off the belt and then you take off this here and the next plan of attack is these three bolts on this fan situation here take that off you yeah you put that to the side right over there then after that you know you, you take off the tensioner off of this right here this is for this pulley here and you get to that then you take off these bolts that are down there all right and they come off pretty pretty smooth and you wiggle this one off as well may i put a little mark on there somewhere ah right there that is straight up so that's how i marked it so that is good then you get to the water pump now with that bracket that you just had that's one, two, three bolts there is. And then all you have now is this bolt on the bottom and another little one that's over there. And you take that one out and another small one out that's like right there. And after that, you have this little bracket that's over here that this is connected to. You move this out of the way and then you'll get to this little bracket right here and you move this out of the way as you can see right there this little bracket here it's uh two bolts one here and one is on the bottom of that bracket and then you can get to this uh get to that that one is over there and you know you take off all the hoses and everything that's connected to it and then the water pump will come off now when you do that you have a little thing that you have to keep in mind and keep in check that thing there and it goes in this way see all of that there because this connects this to the water pump and blah 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 and blah 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 now this is the opti spark whatever you want to call this thing here as you can see this thing already had some rtv around it so it can seal it and everything like that now this has three bolts in different areas one here one here and then there's one up underneath there now when you take that out it should come straight on out now as you can see right here this part right here will line up right there this is the one that you need to line up not that one not that one this one the one with the little notch in it that's how you line it up and everything like that and you kind of just disconnect it and snake this thing through all right we've gotten that thing out now why did i determine that that was the problem well it didn't have any spark um, I changed the spark plugs on this item and then I took one spark plug out, had the old one, and when it shut off, I took one of the plug wires out and it did not spark. Later on, turned it back on, then it sparked and the engine started with the spark plug arcing on this metal part here. So I was just like, you know what, it could be this um, coil. But then I turned the coil on when it was not running and the coil had power because i got shocked so and i checked the voltage later on and it was at 12.13 uh, um volts so the coil was giving you know what it needed to, to this uh situation here and it just wasn't rocking 
So that's when I said, you know what, it's time to um, take this thing out. Now, for you guys who are going through this situation, I know many of you guys, this is, especially you Chevy guys, y'all not new to this. Me, this is the first time I ever did this thing here and it's um, a learning process. Uh, this is pretty cool. Now, we have to go and wait for the parts and put this on and hopefully this helped anybody who were who is doing this or about to do this or if you're about to pick up one of them LT1s you know the situation you know the routine you know the drill this would definitely help you out um, but if you guys have um, the more newer ones like in your vets or anything you ain't gonna have that goddamn fan mechanical fan situation you're just gonna have a different setup that will be actually quicker to do versus doing it like this so thank you guys for watching this episode of build something TV man hope you guys were enlightened man I wanna thank my man Richard right there man thank you so much man for the donation man I really do appreciate it brother oh my god thank you for that man well needed well received and and we're going to use it for the channel man thank you so much and you are correct man 4.6 don't have enough oomph man sometimes every I know a lot of guys are thinking about going you know LS or something like that well man maybe pick up an LT1 man this is if that's the route you want to take man but you know for me I'm just dang boy I just got to work with this 4.6 and all these modular motors and the only thing that we do wish about is to get a coyote motor to get everything going again Richard you are right man they're very difficult to tune and hard to get umph out of these 4.6s and a lot of people who get into the game of the of the Crown Vix slowly figured out that these cars don't have enough spunk for what you want you think that it's a police interceptor that they really fast and they chop chop holy ass no they don't they just like really slow but they have a lot of strength as far as durability and everything like that and that's where this car wins but other than that man when we buy these cars we want to play around with them it ain't nothing you can do for them man but I'm gonna speak about three things that you could do to your Crown Victoria that's pretty cheap that ain't going to be too much crazy mods to really get the best best thing out of your Crown Victoria and we'll speak about that on the next one all right and we'll see you guys on the next video where are we gonna crank that thing up and I'm over here doing this one this one's pretty much done um, give you a little brief rundown uh, we put a fan underneath there that took me three days to do that because I couldn't figure out the length and everything I had to go and cut in here more and um, we put some hood uh, situations right there to lift it up on some old JDM type stuff even though that hot rodders did that before the JDM but JDM took that thing over but let me get up out of this rain man and we'll see you guys on the next one man all right later